You know, this is one of my favorite quotes. Uh, it says, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. I just like it because, number one, most of my heroes are black. Um, I'm a Michael Jordan fan. I'm a Martin Luther King fan. Uh, I'm for Ben Carson. Not because they're black. I just have a love for the black culture, the black community. And then equal to that love is kind of a, a disdain or, um, or it makes me viscerally upset when I see anything that hurts the black culture and I'm just wired that way. And, you know, just Google Enneagram 8, <laughs> Enneagram 7, and, you know, you're going to understand that, that 8s and 7s, we don't have silent opinions. We don't have, um, we don't have, uh, when we see people hurt, and 8s and are very anti-bully, and if you want to see an 8 uh, <laughs> uh, go crazy, uh, you know, put them in the presence of a bully. And, you know, uh, I, I'll talk later about Enneagram 8 if you, if that's something that you guys want, but... I wanted to, to speak to this quote because it says, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. I wanted to give a real specific example uh, of another, kind of how not to do it. Now, this is from the Bible. Um, and the Bible, one thing I like about the Bible, if you read it, it, it has as much um, knowledge or wisdom about how not to do things as it does to do things. You know, it, I just read Proverbs if you're wanting a kind of a Reader's Digest version. It just talks, <laughs> Proverbs is just about wisdom says this, stupidity, or fools do this. And, and, um, and this is an example um, that I'm really glad is in it because a lot of times people think that leaders are perfect people. This is Moses in Exodus 2, I think it's 12. Uh, Exodus 2 verse 12, it's a story where Moses was in the palace and he, he saw his people hurt and, and uh, his people were Hebrews and it says uh, when Moses looked this way and that way, when Moses saw that there was no man around, he slew the Egyptian and he hit him in the sand. Um, and the reason why I, I go from Martin Luther King to Moses is because Moses was, if you read the story, we all know that Moses was to bring freedom for his people. Um, and when he saw his people hurt and injured, it made Moses so upset that he even killed somebody. And I think it's interesting, he says he looked left and he looked right to see that nobody was there, and then he hit him. And there's so much in there about, you know, when we're, when we're doing things that are evil, we're trying to hide things, we're trying to look this way and that way and see who's around. But in this case, he slew the Egyptian and he hit him in the sand. Um, and I like that quote because is it shows how leadership is not supposed to occur. Moses obviously was called, but he wasn't... The way he handled this situation... I, I love the way Dwayne Sheriff, he's a pastor out of, out of Oklahoma, he says, uh, you know, God had a plan for the Egyptians. It was called the Red Sea. The Red Sea was going to kill the Egyptians. Moses was supposed to bring freedom to his people and lead them out of Egypt, not kill them in Egypt. God was going to do the killing. <laughs> and, um, you know, we don't like stories like that, and that's a lot of the reasons why we don't like uh, the Old Testament, is because it speaks to how uh, when you hurt God's people enough, God will intervene, and he'll bring a Red Sea. And, um, and, and that brings me comfort, because... Again, Enneagram 8, that's kind of who I am as a person, if you want to understand who I am emotionally. is I'm, just, I'm kind of a person who, just, who can deal a lot in the negative, and, 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 and I can see darkness, and I hate it, and I want to just reveal it, and I want to make YouTube videos and, and talk about how bullshit happens in the legal system, and if you only do, and I want to go there. And, and then I go back to this quote, and i just like, you know, this is how not to do it. Silence is never the way to do it. And that, again, going back to Martin Luther King, where he's like, hey, if you, if, you want to, if you want to bring the darkness out, just shine the light. And only love can do that. I love how Thad Golis in his book talks about like, the only thing we have to change is love. And when we get confused, if we just take a moment to pause when agitated and just say, okay, you know, um, what, what can I do that's loving and constructive? Because focusing on darkness and fighting the darkness only makes more darkness. It's when we send love out, that's when darkness goes away. And let me show you a real-life example, wrap this up. 
Um, I saw this today. This is uh, Sports Illustrated with Will Smith, and you know I love his. You know I love his. He's a wonderful actor. I mean I think he's one of the most. Uh, even though he's a top actor, I just don't think he gets the credit he deserves. I mean the guy started on a sitcom. How many sitcoms end up becoming, um, you know, major movie stars? I can only think of two. So two people out of. Uh, anyway, I'm a huge Will Smith fan. But he's talking about the NFL, and notice what it says here. It says. Uh, Will Smith shines a light on football's darkest corner and the future of America's game. It's by Ben uh, Reiter. And I love, love the way it says, Will Smith shines a light. And that's what he's doing. He's using his celebrity not to hate the NFL, but he's like, guys, we gotta, we got to talk about the way the NFL treats my people. I just love that. It's such a great example of a modern-day Moses. Um... We go back to that. So that's the answer. No matter what you're going through in life, I know that's a cliche, but we all have struggles. We all have things that we're dealing with, that we're wrestling with. I have my things, you know. Um, you know, I, you know, I don't. I could make lots and lots of videos of the things that where darkness kind of, you know, uh, hems me in. But this is a reminder, and even Will Smith of the Sports Illustrated that came in, just like you know, if you want to fight darkness, the answer is light shine a light on it and i also i like that because it, it doesn't it, he's not advocating that we deny the darkness and a lot of white culture wants to deny oh you're bringing up the past and you're dealing in the 1960s i'm like yeah what happened in the 1960s is still happening i mean look at ferguson look at james gardner look at all I mean, so this is not deny the darkness we have to we have to admit the darkness is there but Martin Luther King says, only light can drive it out, and we have to out-love the darkness. And if there's anything that I want my YouTube video, my, my little channel, my obscure little channel to do, is I want my channel to shine light. And will I, will I talk about darkness? Yes. Will I, will I uh, speak about, about my faith? Uh, unapologetically. Will I even talk about scriptures? Yeah, but also... That's who I am. I want this YouTube channel to really reflect who I am as a person. And this is one of my favorite quotes. And it's just so applicable. In fact, test it. Next time you're in a conflict with somebody or you have some darkness coming in on you, just go back to Martin Luther King and say, okay, I could fight the darkness or I can shine a light. And that's the decision. And when we come into that awareness, that's when magic happens, when we start shining lights. Uh, so thank you, Martin Luther King, for your life. Thank you, Will Smith, for your legacy. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's such a need for, for, um, for the black culture to stand with other, the, stand with each other. And when I see black people uh, defend themselves, it just makes me happy. So way to go, Will Smith, shining your light. Thank you, Martin Luther King. Have a great day.